So in the process of making my preview for the Corona Open Mexico, I did an interview with Daniel Tan from Waterways Travel. There was a lot of information that I couldn't fit in the original video. By the way, there's a link to that in the description below. Anyway, there's flight information, there's surf travel information, there's accommodation information, there's also the latest as of July 2021 COVID information. I thought it was well worthwhile to put it on a separate video for you guys to check out. So here it is. So tell me about the travel to get there. How was it with the COVID situation? And tell us about, I'm a guy living in Los Angeles. Tell us how I would, how I would get there and how much time it takes. Yeah, so you know, generally all flights will typically go through Mexico City. That's your general routing for most, for most places going into that southern part of Mexico. Um, on my trip, I actually went through Dallas, mm. uh, which is, I think, like four-hour flight down to there. And then from Dallas down was like a three-hour flight to straight to Huatuco. So I like that routing because I don't have to deal with customs in Mexico City. Yeah. Uh, customs through Huatuco is really easy. Um, you know, there are no travel requirements to get in currently for uh, COVID to Mexico. Um, you just need to fill out a health affidavit saying that you, you are in good health and haven't been exposed to COVID. Um, and uh, you do need a COVID test to get back into the States if you're flying. Um, if you're lucky enough to live in San Diego, you can cross the land border through t uh, in a Tijuana and fly from Tijuana directly into Huatuco. Uh, that flight operates one day a week on Valeris. Um, the nice thing about that is if you don't wanna take a COVID test, they do not require COVID testing to get back into the States if you cross mm. the land border. Um, so yeah, fairly yeah. simple. Yeah, sounds like a dream trip. And I think after we watch this contest, we're all gonna wanna go there. The other thing I'm gonna ask you that's related is Maybe tell us about some of the properties that you have. Tell us about the places that we can stay in. Where do you guys have camps or resorts? Or maybe tell us about the resorts that you guys have. Yeah. So for a long time, we focused mainly on the, uh, the northern or the, sorry, excuse me, the southern zone down in the Selena Cruz area. So we've got two properties that we work with uh, or two operators that we work with down there. Uh, Punta Escondida Surf Tours, which is our, our original city camp we've worked with for a long time. And then Punta Canejo Surf Resort, which is on mm. the beach, right at the uh, on the north kind of north side of Canejo at that uh, at the point. Um, both are really good options if you're looking for something for a little higher end, a little nicer. You're staying at Canejo. Uh, if you're looking for something that's a little less expensive, but but gets you to all the surf you need, Escondida uh, Punta Escondida Surf Tours is a definitely a great place to stay. Um, you know, one of the main reasons why I was actually down in Mexico, I was checking out a new location we're going to start working with in the uh in the playa mapon area um which is you know one of the better places that you can stay uh close to watuco so if you don't want to drive the three hours to salina cruz you could drive 30 minutes to mahon and have access to those waves in the north Because it's yeah, sure, it's yeah, gonna I mean, be crowded, but uh -oh. it's not it's not that it's gonna be crowded. The way I look at well, the way I look at any surf trip that 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 anyone goes on, um, it's always less crowded than at home. Um, and you're there and you're there to surf all day. Yeah. So pick and choose your times. Like if you think you're if you show up, don't get all burnt out that that there's like 20 guys in the water or 30 guys in the water, you know, know that. Take your time. You'll get a set. Just just wait it out. If it if it feels like it's the guys are too aggro in the water, come out and just have a beer and relax for a little bit and wait for them to cycle out. So that's the way I look at any surf trip. Damn, dude. There's going to be a special section of travel advice that what you just said that shit's going in. <laughs> that was money because yeah. it's so true. I I get a little. I was a little jaded being in Indonesia and seeing macaronis just overrun. I'm going. This is more crowded than Rincon. But if you think about it and you time your sessions and you wait till the right guys or the wrong guys are in the water, you get amazing amount of waves and you're getting macaronis, man. Yeah. You're getting right hand points in Mexico. Yeah. You got to look at it from that perspective. It's all about sure. even even if you're out there for 
you know, like what's your typical session here? Your typical session is maybe an hour and a half to two, uh, two and a half hours, right? Yeah. And you're trying to cram in getting all your ways in that either before work, before the wind gets on it, before anything else. And you get, I can understand getting jaded and frustrated with a crowd out here because it just doesn't seem to end. And, but when you're out at like Macca's or at Barra, you're, you're out in the water for a long period of time and you can just wait, wait out, get the, get the quality ones. You don't need the quantity uh, down there. Yeah, for sure. This little town of Barra, can it handle the capacity of the whole WCT circus coming in there? I, I had that question in the back of my mind. I'm thinking like, it's got to be a small little place. It's a little village. So basically what Barra does is, is there's a gate that's in order to get into the beach there. And generally speaking, it's like pay to park. I mean, you, you pay uh, like $10 a day uh, to park your car in that zone. I don't know what the mm. WSL is going to do or has arranged for, for the guys down there or how they're going to set them up. But Barra, its town itself, has a lot of little budget places to stay. So if some of these guys set up like little small homestays or something like that, um, it can handle it. But if you want anything nicer, you're looking to stay in the Watuko, which is probably about you know, 50, 50 minutes away, five zero. Yeah. Um, wow. And, or Mahone, which is like 20 minutes away. If there's, if there's places in around that zone. Um, so it's going to be interesting how they handle or how they set up uh, all the athletes at that point. Um, I mean, they've done it before in the past, so I'm sure they've, they're very capable of doing it again. I think my first wave I caught out there was somewhere in that 20, 30 second range. I mean, it can compared to, I mean, it, it may seem longer or shorter, but you always forget how, how long waves are until you realize that like, your legs are burning. Right. <laughs> so, um, you know, it was long enough to where I needed to do the, the, the run around. You know? Yeah. So yeah. I'd say maybe it's like two, two, 300 yards or something like that. Wow. Uh, as far as from the, from where I came in to where I walked off at the point. That's insane, man. Um, Hey, Mike, thanks for doing this. I really appreciate it. Tell us how we can get in touch with you. Uh, yeah, no worries. Happy to join you. Um, if you want more information on anything, you could visit our website, uh, waterwaystravel.com. Um, you can give us a call, uh, and that numbers in our contact details on our website or below, um, or you can email me, Mike at waterwaystravel.com. Perfect, man. Really appreciate it. By the way, everybody, all the details will be in the description below. Thanks, Mike, again, and uh, look forward to seeing you on my next trip. So, look, dude, we just, we got it, the first one we killed, but yeah. that, I've got so many pieces, I can make it even better. So, uh, again, thanks, man. I'm going to let you go. I, I can't believe I blew that. Don't tell anybody. Uh, no <laughs> Actually, I'm, I'm probably going to admit it. Uh, write it away and say, man, we killed the first one. You guys should have been there. <laughs> uh, that's all good. It's so funny. I listened to a podcast. They did the same thing, hour long podcast, and the guy didn't record it. Yeah, they, I think, they, um, yeah. I don't know if you listen to Stab's podcast. I freaking love him. And Mike, uh, Mikey Charamella did that. Yeah. <laughs> with like mcfanning or something it happened. <laughs> can it's you imagine yeah. what a bummer well hey thanks man and um take care brother i really yeah. appreciate you no worries if you need anything let me know okay all right